What's the biggest lie pop culture taught us about sex and romance? That love is easy and relationships will have romance just fall into your lap if it's meant to be. Real life is not a movie and it gives people a very wrong image of what a healthy relationship looks like. This. When I first met my boyfriend of going on 7 years now, we were 16 and 18. Completely in love, absolutely in the honeymoon phase, and thought it would honestly always be that way. Come a year in, and the problem started. Being that young and in love is a whirlwind. Facing early adulthood together is difficult, and honestly it was a bit tough there for a while, but I love him even more now than I thought was possible. Like, we got through that. We've still got more struggles to go I'm sure, but I've noticed relationships go through phases. Much like we do ourselves so because at that point your partner becomes an inherent part of you. It's definitely not easy that's for sure. Something I naively wasn't expecting. But now that I'm older and have matured a bit, I wouldn't want it any other way. What's the sunshine without a little rain? If you don't have it while you're a teenager, you're an unlovable loser that we're supposed to have long sex sessions. Honestly a good 15 to 20 minutes is pretty good for me. That there's no such thing as clean up afterwards. Everyone just has a slight, post coital glisten and that's about as far as it goes. No awkward waddle. No wet spot on the mattress that gets cold way too quickly so you both bend your bodies around it so you can still snuggle without touching it. No sex towel that probably should have been washed about two weeks ago and is getting to the point where it might make a worthy substitute for a crowbar with how stiff it is. Oh, and if you do it in a horror movie, you're 100% gonna die. That every woman has to have an orgasm from only penetration. The two extremes. 1. If you're a stalker, she'll eventually give you a chance. 2. If you're her friend for long enough, she'll eventually give you a chance. That second one messed me up for a long time. That if a woman isn't interested in a man, he shouldn't take no for an answer but should pursue her relentlessly, until she gives in and goes on a date with him. That sex and romance is the most important things in life. Telling a friend or acquaintance that you're in love with them ending up positive in any way. Most likely it will just scare them off. If they do end up dating you, the relationship dynamic will be skewed in an unhealthy way. Shoot your shot by all means, but do it like a normal human being and just ask the person on a date. If you want to show them your tear-stained diary entries down the road, that can be a cute story or whatever. But don't lead with it. That a man should be able to read the thoughts of the one he loves and predict every need and want without any communication on either part. Communication is hard. If I could read minds that would be awesome. Since we cannot and have to put effort into communicating with our significant others. It isn't something you just get. It takes a lot of hard work, tears, apologies, forgiveness and understanding. And it's daily, constant thing a broken bar my wife and I have been married for 10 years and we're still figuring out this dance. Also, that sex isn't messy and it just happens. That being romantic means big expensive gestures. Honestly I'd rather have someone to help do the dishes than a giant bouquet of flowers. That good relationships are always 50-50. This is rarely the case. It's 30-70 this week because you have a big work deadline and baby 20 next week because their mental health is bad. Romance is awesome but most of the time love looks like cooking dinner when you're both exhausted and helping your partner's parents set up their new Wi-Fi. That sex is always amazing and always feels good. Sex turns out, it's like any other human activity, it can be really bad. In fact, it can even be really bad most of the times. And as far as love goes, love is brain chemistry. It's constantly romanticized, like it's some kind of magical power and this gives way too many people unrealistic expectations about it, making them make stupid, stupid decisions, love conquers it all and stuff. It isn't. It's just your brain producing the right juices and making you feel attracted to another person. All it takes is ignoring those feelings for a while, then the chemical reaction ends and you're back to normal. You cannot save someone's life by loving them enough. If you're dating someone who is suicidal, it is them that needs to make that decision to live themselves. You might think trying to go the extra mile to help them out will save them and then things will get better after the fact, but you're completely wrong. They will use you as a crutch through life and never get better. 
If you aren't happy with your partner, talk to them about your feelings. If they refuse to change, you aren't a priority in their life. Leave. Some people might think that sounds toxic, but it's normal communication for a relationship and it goes both ways. If you find yourself constantly sacrificing for them and they're never willing to do anything to better your life, the relationship is going to be the death of you. And I don't mean buying you presents or having sex with you. When you go to meet with them, you should be happier than you are without them. You shouldn't feel a sense of relief when you leave their side. And yet feeling those things also doesn't mean there's something wrong with you, or that you're somehow causing problems. It's a warning sign that you are being manipulated. Learn to trust your feelings, your real feelings and not the censored ones your brain offers you. That your soulmate is someone who you fall in love with madly and deeply, with great passion and sweeping you off your feet every day. Rather, you have to like your life partner, not just love. You'll be spending lots of time together, so you have to at least tolerate each other. Also, as you progress, both of you grow and change, and you have to learn to live with the new you, and the new them. I'm lucky to have someone that I love, and also like spending time with. She's not the most intense, passionate, unreserved love I've ever experienced, but our relationship has the most breadth and depth from years of learning each other's routines, preferences, and once in a while, finding ways to still surprise each other. If you develop a crush on someone else your current relationship is over, you'll never be happy together so you should break up and be happy with the other person. Also it's the same as cheating for whatever reason. Developing a crush while being in a relationship is natural and can indicate that you're missing something in your current relationship. But it doesn't mean you're a cheater and should break up for the sake of both of you. You need to evaluate your feelings and talk about them with your partner. In my case a few years back I developed a minor crush on my friend because 1. I was curious about the other side of my bisexuality and 2. Because my previous relationships didn't work out I was really insecure about this one. Me and my boyfriend talked it over and don't have this issue anymore. Whenever I feel like I'm falling for someone else I remind myself that I actually don't, I just need something, like a hug or a compliment, and talk with my boyfriend about it. Relationships aren't perfect and require communication. If we follow our hearts our relationships would end as soon as the honeymoon stage is over. Good relationships last forever. It's not true. Sometimes a relationship is good for 5 years or 10 years and then needs to end. It wasn't a mistake. It gave you what you needed at the time, but then it stopped doing that or your needs changed. That casual sex leads to healthy adjusted individuals. In reality, it tends to lead to mental health issues. Especially issues surrounding self-esteem and dependence on alcohol, drugs as ways to fill the void of emotional attachment. Old guy here coming from a different generation, I grew up thinking the man was the one with the sex drive and the wife put out every once in a while just to keep the husband happy. Yep, I know, really old fashioned. So, I wasn't ready for an always horny wife. I mean, the older she gets, the hornier she gets. I wish I could go like I could back in my 20s. I now understand the young hot pool boy jokes. That love alone is enough. They either ignored or outright taught wrong lessons about communication, ongoing hard work, and conflict resolution skills required for a successful relationship that contains a good sex life and romance. If you love each other enough, you can make it work. And no definitely stayed with a couple exes who were so incompatible and we were so bad too, for each other just because we love each other. I grew up loving movies like The Notebook, but now I can just appreciate it as a story but not a romance to aspire to. They argued way too much. I feel like in the past decade or two it's become much more typical for romance movies to start out sexually casual and gradually develop into something serious and loving, showing less of how couples treat each other and more about their raw chemistry. While that's certainly something that can happen, it's a bad expectation to set. Beyond relationships getting physically intimate too early being potentially problematic for the progression of the relationship, these movies also tend to neglect showing the work that goes into it and the continuous effort to be loving and respectful in their words and actions. Romance is not like when the male character is running through the airport trying to get to female character you will probably be tackled. Sex not all women come from just penetration sometimes we just need little bit of foreplay and some toys to get things going. 
sex toys are not your enemy either a lot of women like to play around in the bedroom to see what works and what doesn't work them. Relationships are nothing like in books it requires a lot of work, communication, doing the little things make things easier on your significant other chipping in for your share of housework. Cooking dinner or even just meal prepping the night before takes a lot of stress out of dinner if you both have busy schedules due to work. Making time for yourselves as a couple do surprise date nights by their favorite things. Not everyone grows up after high school some people just get stuck in their adult life because they peak in high school. High school, college are not like the movies high school movies and shows truly do lie about what it's like. Granted there are some really bad schools and there are some really good schools that can be a hit or miss. Workplaces can be just like school with some people just downright assholes to any newcomer to the workplace or to even the ones who had been there for years. Managers and high ups can be total assholes as well. Hook up culture. Casual sex doesn't even hold a candle to actual intimacy, vulnerability. That getting laid with different people will benefit you anyhow. Sleeping with X number of people is not gonna change your life anyhow. That's the biggest lie. Someone who never slept with anyone is as human as Sodotone who slept with 100 people. Sex is not a goal, it's a tool. And people should have dignity to not become a public park where anyone can enter. That marriage is a lifelong romance. It's not. It's a lot of compromise and restraining from not trying to smack each other in the face. You see each other at your worst as well as your best, and it ain't always pretty. You become as one which is difficult to maintain at times. You can still have romantic moments but if you go into a marriage thinking it's going to be like a long romantic love affair, you're done before you be even started. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe and share the video to your friends, family, homeless person and favorite ice cream truck driver. I am a broke college student and would like to be able to afford a pack of saltine crackers. Have a wonderful day, and as always, drink plenty of water.